Hello everybody, uh, Edgar Fernandez from Pharma Chemical Safety Limited, located in Bramford, Ontario, Canada. The topic of today is basic competencies to implement a process safety management program in the pharmaceutical and manufacturing industries. Uh, there are three, uh, three main uh, basic competencies. Um, uh, as you can see here on the slides, they're uh, listed as one, two, and three. Uh, doesn't matter the order. It's not the intent to say what is the number one or the number three on the, on the third one or the second one. It's only the, uh, that you need, uh, company needs to have or the people who are leading these type of programs, they need to have these, at least these three basic competencies. And I would say that the whole company to, uh, to, to have a better understanding and a, a better approaching of, uh, uh, to, uh, regarding on the uh, process safety management programs to have, to have success in, uh, in identifying hazards, in uh, evaluating risk. Uh, risk um, assessments and that is going to allow you to have a better um, making the decision process in the future uh, regarding on what you want to produce, when you want to manufacture, when and where, and, uh, and you can absorb this type of risk depending on the, uh, or depending on the hazard you, you are facing. So um, currently in the industry, I've noticed that um, in, I mean, these these competencies um, uh, it should be also at least on the basic concepts to to the uh, to the to the steering committee. That means CEOs, um, uh, vice presidents, and directors. Um, one of the things, and actually, I'm not saying that because it's my opinion. It's um, uh, the reason why I'm saying this is um, the Chemical Safety Board. Um, in the last, let's say, five years, during the incident investigations, they have found that people who are sitting in those positions that like that that i said like ceos vice president and directors they don't have the basic competencies or the basic knowledge of process safety especially when they are managing process safety cover processes in the chemical in the pharmaceutical industry and the oil and gas as well so they have found this disconnection between middle management or people on the floor or our in, junior engineers or senior engineers and the steering committee. So when they have these type of meetings discussing what needs to be done, where needs to be done, what and how and when, so there is a disconnection. There is a disconnection of the language that people are talking and that's an, uh, an mis a misconception on what the other person is saying. So that's the main one of the main reasons why, uh, or the, one of the root causes. I would, it's, it's better to say what this incident has happened in the past, and that's the reason why now it's instead of having 20, uh, 14 elements on the on the process safety management program, now you have 20. What is those the other the other six? It's now it's in the program risk based process safety. It's those six elements that are core that are on the uh, establishing the process safety culture that is going that is in. They are encouraging to involve these people that are sitting in those high, on very high level positions. And uh, one of the competencies, actually, well, this is gonna, is gonna, is gonna, is gonna help you to 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 do to achieve three things. So you're gonna continuously improve your knowledge. So knowledge is very important. Knowledge of, of your process. Having the basic knowledge of your process is very important. It's the same as if we talk about GMPs. If you don't dominate or you don't master the ICHQ7, that is the 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 the, uh, the GMPs, the good manufacturing uh, practices. So how you expect you're gonna pass FDA or you're gonna pass Health Canada or any health regulatory agency in the world, like in Europe or in Australia, or New Zealand or in Asia or in Latin America? You don't have master that. So it, well, it's the same in, in, in process safety. And actually they go both hand by hand. You want to lean your processes in the future. So having the knowledge, having all, um, in the knowledge of your process, that's very important. So and it's not only to put the, the process into, to, to uh, produce a certain uh, API or certain, or certain uh, product, and then you don't have any idea about what type of hazards you are facing, the risks that they are involving, and then suddenly you have an incident that is gonna stop your process maybe for six months, 
because when the Minister of Labor or OSHA in the United States or in Europe goes to your facility, conducts an inspection and sees, okay, there is a lack of competencies here, you need to sort it out this first, and then after you can start producing, and then that process at least is going to take three months. So uh, the other, the second point is ensuring appropriate information is available to people who need it. So uh, all the information be regard, regarding on your process needs to be available. When we are talking about procedures, standards, uh, uh, regulations, uh, codes, uh, uh, standard operation, operational procedures, um, some um, um, some data that that needs to be that needs to be analyzed, also information from the manufacturer as well. And consistently, and the third point is consistently applying what has been learned. So obviously all of this generates knowledge and it needs to be learned in the, the proper way. It needs to be in the right way that the reason why it needs to be set up and a, and a methodology or a, or, a pro, or a procedure to, to allow everybody to learn. So that's the introduction why these basic competences needs to be, needs, they need to be in place or why these, the people who are leading these processes, or they are responsible to generate mechanical integrity, incident investigations, or process has an analysis, they need to have these basic competences. So I want to start um, with, the, um, with the mechanical integrity. Um, Mechanical integrity is very important, uh, and I'm not saying it's the first one to learn. Uh, you need to learn the three of the, you need to have the three of them combined in a in a very well fundamental knowledge. Uh, would uh, say I mean by saying that by having said that it's you need to have the understanding and the experience and the training and the knowledge of these three of, of, of these three uh, areas to uh, start implementing or leading um, and a, and a, and, and, a, and a process safety management program. Well, me mechanical integrity. What's the, the, the what is the goals of of, of uh, mechanical in mechanical integrity? Well, ensures equipment uh, that works properly according to the operation that we want to perform. Um, obviously, the equipment is going to be in compliance with the. I mean, we want to be in compliance with the parameters that we can uh, that we need to establish to operate in the pharmaceutical industry or in the manufacturing industry as well. Um, so it's installed in accordance with cost regulation and standards. That's something that is very important. Not only by the manufacturing recommendations, only you need to review, depending on the country that you you, you were, you, you are located, you need to review codes like fire, fire codes. Um, uh, if there is a pressure vessel, you need to review uh, the SMEA in the United States, TSSA in Canada, or an or the compet uh, on the uh, of the uh, governmental uh, agency in in Europe or on Asia or in Latin America. So there is regulations regard regarding on that um, regulations such as, for example, uh, in Canada we have uh, in Ontario the uh, on uh, the Ontario regulation A51 industrial establishment section seven. So you need to conduct a pre-start health and safety health and safety reviews. Um, that need to be conducted or stand by a professional engineer. Um, that's one of the recommendations. And um, that's the third one is remains fit for the operation. So it's fit to operate it. So that means that you need to have or you need to develop an, a maintenance program. That is a preventive maintenance program. Sometimes companies, few companies they go to have to having predicted maintenance programs, especially uh, as an example in the electrical systems and corrected maintenance programs that is something that it needs to be fixed right away. So you need to have competencies on those ones as well because the maintenance personnel that normally there are technicians, they need to know codes, regulations and standards to perform those maintenance. The, th those codes, is gonna, they're going to tell you also the frequency and the way they need to do it and how it needs to be recorded. So um, um, Sometimes, uh, or many times, I'm being involved with uh, um, conducting process hazard analysis and, and 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 or reviewing process safety information, and there is no there is no um, um, a good understanding on how mechanical integrity works. So when you review the maintenance programs, sometimes they don't have the frequency to inspect, for example, uh, rupture discs. Uh, so factory mutual, for example, has a guideline, has a data sheet, how it needs to be performed, what is the frequency, and how it needs to be recorded. 
So also you need to consult your insurance company. Um, the four, the, the, the fifth, it's, um, so okay, you, you establish those maintenance problems according to specs, codes, and regulations and standards. So the fire, for example, fire codes, uh, they have a very specific um, requirements for, uh, I would say, um, for how you need to test um, um, uh, interlocks, um, fire safety doors, for example, or your fire or your uh, or your fire extinguishing system. So how it needs to be established, how it needs to be installed, how it needs to be uh, tested or recording, and the frequency that you need to perform the maintenance, and how it needs to be done. And also, that is very important is inspection and testing. So. The, how, what is the elements and the information that the inspection needs to have and needs to collect and how it needs to be trended to uh, prevent uh, incidents uh, happening in the future. And these programs actually, the mechanical integrity focus on three things that is preventing catastrophic release of materials and energy. So when, I, when we said release, it's um, spills. And energy is uh, flash fires, for example, or uh, or um, you have an exothermic reaction. What's going to happen? There, uh, and you have you have a high a high pressure inside. Suddenly, you change the pressure inside of the reactor. It's going to bump or not? It's going to it's going to it's going to it's going to blow out the rupture disc, the rupture disc out. It's something that that needs to be taken in account. Uh, ensure the availability. Like we, like I said, it's the maintenance programs. That's very important to establish. And it is uh, maybe it sounds easy now that I'm. It's, it's, it's easy to mention that it's in a presentation, but when 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 actually uh, we start developing those programs or we start auditing those programs, is when we find um, that those elements are not in the standard operation procedures or, not, or they are not in the in inspection inspection sheets. And actually, uh, um, you transfer this one to to the uh, to the quality to the pharmaceutical quality management. It's an example or to the quality management. Um, um, the uh, for example, the FDA has found that that actually, um, uh, but I would say in my previous video, 150. Um, Company, pharmaceutical companies got a, a forms 483 in December 2016 regarding on, on on many aspects, but the root cause of that or is nobody knows the root cause. A lack of, or uh, the root cause is one, and the second one is the lack of uh, competency, of the lack of knowledge of what is what uh, about your process, and that's it's something that if I say this 150 companies that they are they are getting. Uh, form, forms for 83s, for example, in the pharmaceut pharmaceutical and food industry is, is a, a data that we need to take con in consideration. And obviously, they are the same. We studied those H483. We're going to found that we don't have the right knowledge or the, or the amount of knowledge of the process that we are managing. And that is something that tra transferring that to safety so if we have gaps in quality, for sure you're gonna have gaps in safety, bigger gaps. And that's the reason why I mentioned at the beginning of this video is you don't master the, your ICHQ7 on the pharmaceutical food industry, how you're gonna master your, your uh, GMPs passing uh, uh, health uh, regulatory agencies as the same in safety. Uh, uh, um, so uh, I repeat that again, because it's something that is it's a reality in the industry. The second one, the second uh, competency that companies need to have is um, um, incident investigations. So uh, we need to uh, one uh, one of the objectives of the company need, uh, need to be um, establish a formal process on incident investigations. Um, I heard about um, a lot about the um, people of companies they uh, implement um, uh, five whys. Uh, FDA doesn't recognize five whys. Doesn't say in any place that five was should shouldn't be uh, utilized, but um, you hear the the FDA inspectors uh, and the type of question they ask, uh, they are looking for causal factors and root cause analysis and, and root causes, and unfortunately five wise is not gonna give you that. So you need to establish a formal process of incident investigations to find in this case of process safety 
to ever to to find the causal factors and the root cause analysis and the root cause of each causal factor that you identify during the investigation that's going to allow you to train uh, you're going to train the incidents and data analysis as well it's very important so uh, on that the one skill that people who are performing incident investigations they need to be uh, they need to master the data collection they need to be able or be competent to to collect data and interpret that data by graphics or by or by trending um, and to find that's going to allow them to find the causal factors and the root cause of each one of them that at the end of the investigation if they're going to allow them to uh, implement or to recommend cap as corrective action and preventive actions as well if you don't find those causal and uh, causal factors and their root causes, it's gonna be almost uh, it's gonna be difficult to to uh, to to prevent that incident happen again in the future. And that's one that has been one of the findings in the FDA as well. And lastly, um, and last but not the least, is the process hazard analysis. So um, process hazard analysis has two elements. Actually, it's the elements to uh, it's uh, the process safety information and uh, the um, and, uh, and, the, and, the, and the process hazard analysis itself so um, one of the elements actually uh, the people need, need to uh, need to have the ability and the competency no it's not the ability the competency to uh, analyze reading technical documents and specifications engineering drawings and calculations uh, specifications for design, manufacturing, and installation of equipment, and other documents such as MSDSs or SOPs. And I found, and I'm being I, uh, I'm involved in comp in companies where they go and start conducting a process hazard analysis without analyzing or reviewing the process safety information. And and sadly, and more, and and, and that's something that worries me about it is they don't even know what is a process safety information so uh so they they go to the process hazard analysis pretty much to design but it's still the designing is bad because they don't know what parameters they need to start uh reviewing so process hazard analysis is to review the the the, the, the proposed design the, pro the proposed process not the meeting to design and many companies they, they are making that mistake and that's the reason why they have repeatedly incident by incidents by incidents the same type of incidents it's because they don't they don't understand what is a process safety information the information needs to be analyzed the data collection needs to be performed before conducting a process hazard analysis and that should be done by a competent person and therefore you can conduct the pha like i said that we identified two things the hazards and eval and it's going to evaluate the risk that's going to allow you to make decisions based on risk if the risk is acceptable or not and um, that's the uh, my topic of today hopefully uh, helps everybody uh, there in the, in the in the industry in the business but make sure that your people has these three basic competencies people who's performing and at least your steering committee people who are in the high high very level uh, positions they understand the basic the basics they don't understand the specifics but they understand the basics of these three com these three competencies to the, and they they're gonna understand better wh why there is the, the they're gonna start they're gonna understand the way that certain people are make are making decisions and now there's gonna they're gonna allow them to have to speak the same language and have a better and, and have a better making decision process Thank you very much. Um, 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 below, you, uh, uh, you can click uh, to access my webpage at www.pharmachemicalsafety.com uh, or www.pharma-chemicalsafety.ca uh, 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 in, in, uh, in the description of this video in, uh, in the YouTube channel. It's, 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 there are the, uh, the links uh, there. And um, thank you very much, guys. Have a good day and happy uh, happy Canada Day. I'm living in Canada, so July 1st is Canada Day, and we are celebrating 150 years old. Thank you very much, and enjoy your long weekend in Canada. And if you don't you haven't seen you, happy Independence Day in the United States. It's July the 4th. Thank you very much. Have an excellent day.